Sorry about that, guys. Last time. Yep. Okay. No, this is the beginning. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, um, yeah, we got like 500 people here. All right. We're just going to bounce some questions off of you to see where you stand on the current model. So uh, are you supporting the current model, which is 24,901 miles in circumference? Yeah. Okay. Do you trust NASA? No. It, as part of what I'm going to say, I mean, I have, if, if you want me to like end, make this shorter, I could just read a couple sentences that I wrote literally like not even two paragraphs and it would probably uh, answer these questions. Well, I'll just, I think there's like eight left. So let me just go through. All right. Do you believe that natural science is the most appropriate branch of science to study the natural world? I mean, I see on you, your page, you write natural science. So I can't, uh, your definition of what basically physics, chemistry, biology, geometry, geology, stuff like that. That's real. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So observable, testable and repeatable experiments. Okay. Definitely. So, um, does water cover the majority of Earth's surface? Yes. Okay. You believe in gravity? Believe in? I understand that there's a force in the universe. You could call it gravity. You could call it whatever you want. There's different definitions of it, but uh, that's not what this debate's about. So. Well, it is in a way because without gravity, the globe doesn't hold any water. So you have to believe in gravity for the you know, mass attracting mass by virtue of its mass alone. Do you believe in that? Yeah, but we're, there's geometry and then there's physics and there's two different things. You know what I mean? There's it's two totally different things. One, one's a shape of the earth and the other, I mean, like, let me, for example, for everybody out there, right? You have a ball in your hand, right? You have a ball in your hand. You're going to put the ball on a table. Is it moving? No. <laughs> is it still a ball? Yeah. Exactly. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about the shape of something. We're not talking about physics here. So this debate has nothing to do with gravity. This has to do with geometry, not physics. It has everything to do with gravity. No, it doesn't. I just explained mm -hmm. to you that if you have a ball and you put it on a table, is it moving? You told me no. Is it still a ball? You said yes. Topic of the debate is... I'm here yeah, yeah. to prove that this is a well, spherical right. earth and show evidence that it's a spherical earth. And you're here to show evidence that it is flat. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you believe water finds its level? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Do you know the equation for earth's curvature on a ball, 24,901 miles in circumference? I don't have it in front of me, me and I'm not an expert on all the math. I'm learning it as we go along. Um, as it's I go forward, word. yeah, seven point nine. Some people, so flat earthers have a tendency to kind of leave parts out of the equation. I feel because they don't really totally understand the math. Just like I can't totally uh, equate how far the sun is and do the math. It's very deep process. I could link people to the actual calculation, and I'll put put videos up there later on because it's very, as you know, mm. the science and the math behind actually figuring out how far the sun away is not exactly like two plus two. Yeah. Know? But, but we're standing on a surface in which we can measure. And if Eratosthenes was right with the stick experiment and the Earth is a ball 24,901 miles in circumference, then spherical trigonometry says that bodies of water, if gravity exists, and they're being pulled at a, or a consistent rate towards the core of the Earth, they're being pulled at a rate of 7.98 inches per mile square. You can Google uh, Earth curvature equation. It's right. very easy to look up. Okay, yeah, there's different equations for lots of things, like perspective that, you know, a lot of flat earthers like to use. The yeah, word we're talking about the curvature right now. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm here to prove, that there's a curvature. Yeah. Okay, so can we agree on 7.98 inches per mile square? Or have you not looked into that? I've seen the 8-inch, but, you know, once again, there's, there's, uh, there's, it's a math, mathematical equation that isn't just 8 inches. There's a lot more to it, you know what I mean? But, um. What else is there to it? Can you expand on that? Uh, I don't really, no, I don't feel the need to expand on that. I'm just here to show evidence of a, of a spherical earth. Yeah. Is it because you can't expand on it or that you don't feel the need to? I don't feel the need to at all. I'm here to prove uh, the shape of the earth, that we can measure it, experiment, observe, 
and see that the shape of the earth is a sphere. And of course, you, you're here to do, to prove that it's flat, right? Yeah. You're here, natural proof, you're here to show proof that it's flat as well, that we can measure, experiment on, and observe, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool, so we agree. Okay. All right, so uh, do you believe that we can stick to a spinning ball without gravity? No, but once again, we're like going away from the debate here. Like we're wasting time here. Yeah, I've already told you, if you have a ball- Dude, you, you, cannot, on the table, listen, you, cannot believe, you cannot believe in this without gravity. That's the glue that holds everything together. You realize this, right? You are going to have to prove gravity tonight. I, 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 I just showed you an example of how we're talking about ge geometry here, not physics. And you agreed that you could put a ball on the table and it wouldn't move. And it's still a ball if it's not moving, right? Yes, but you're, that's a straw man that's argument. Because debate you're about me. physics a different time, but this debate is about the shape of the earth. Okay, well, you're going to have to prove gravity, and I'm just no, letting I you know. I explain that I don't have to. I just explained that I don't have to. And you should have, bottom line is, you're supposed to have evidence that it's flat. And I'm supposed yeah. to have evidence that so it's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not only debunk gravity tonight, I'm going to prove that bodies of water do not curve. Basically, your time, time by talking about gravity. Basically, your time by talking dude, about dude, gravity, because that's physics. Dude, I'm talking dude, about, this is a, dude, dude. This is a de debate about geometry. Right? This is a debate about the shape of the Earth, correct? The shape of the Earth. Yes. That's it. That's it. You're ignoring, so you're going to throw the gravity. Round. It doesn't need gravity to be round. You just admitted okay. that when you said if you put a ball on the, why Why is that, like, how do you not understand that? What does a ball, okay, what does a ball on the table have anything to do with Earth, which is a, in a low-pressure vacuum system? Once again, you're going into physics when we're talking about a geometrical shape. This is the subject of the debate. You are here. You literally saying Earth is flat. I'm saying it's spherical. Like literally, that's why this whole question part in the beginning goes away from what the debate is because you, you're leading the conversation. No, yeah, you are. You're leading. It has the conversation everything to do with what we're talking about. To go, and I'm telling you, which you agree about that this is not what the conversation's about. The conversation is about the shape of the Earth. Everybody watching yeah. wants to see proof that the Earth is flat. They right? also want to see proof it's a globe. So let, right. let's stick with the geometry here, because that's what this is a question of. Scientifically, this is a question of geometry, the shape of the Earth. So physics doesn't play a role in the shape of the Earth. Are you saying that? Physics has no part in this conversation. Well, we're talking about the shape of the Earth, so yes, it does. No, that's geometry, and that's what we're going to stick with, is geometry. And you should have no problem. If you have, if you have proof geometrical you need geometrical proof to prove that it's flat right so if right, you right. have geometry on your side you should have no problem with sticking to the topic of the debate which is geometry by definition i can't tell if you're like fucking with me right now you've never been thrown off with the truth about the shape of the earth having nothing to do with uh with gravity or geometry, or it's just geometry. It's not physics. Yeah. It is physics. It has everything to do with gravitational force. It doesn't because need gravity to be a ball, bro. Okay, what is pulling water down at the core of the Earth? This, you're going, again, to a gravitational debate. This is not what this debate's about. Let's not waste time on that. We're talking if, your whole debate, We're if your whole debate is revolving around physics, then you lost from the beginning because... This is not about physics. You're here to prove the Earth is flat. Dude. You're not here to prove gravity or not. All right. All right. Do you believe that vacuum... Okay, last question, then we can start. We have 30 seconds. Do you believe that vacuums require a container? I, I don't... I plead the fifth on that. I don't, I don't care. It's nothing to do with geometry. Nothing to do with... It has geometry. everything to do with the, the Earth's atmosphere, okay? You just said atmosphere? Do you believe there's an yeah. atmosphere? So you believe there's yeah. an atmosphere? Yeah, there's a high pressure system. That's what we're breathing in right now. Okay, so now I get to ask you a question because you just asked me a bunch of questions, right? So I'll just ask you one question, okay? All right. Well, I just asked you one. I said, do you believe in atmosphere? And you said, yes, there's an atmosphere, right? Correct. Did you ever look at the second part of the word atmosphere? Really? I just asked you a question. Did you ever look at the second part of the word atmosphere? 
Well, we have hemispheres too, man. No, that's Must not be a bubble. But what is the second part of the word atmosphere? What's the last part of the word? Sphere. So you believe that there's an atmosphere and you're using the word atmosphere, which only works on a sphere, really. So you're saying it's not called atmosphere flat, right? Do you, do, you, do you fly in airplanes? Is it called atmos flat or is it called atmosphere? Is it called air sphere? Hey, it's a I logical fallacy. Wanted, I just wanted to see if you ever looked at the second part of the word. Now we could move on to actual evidence of, you know. I hope you have better arguments than this. <laughs> what the shape of the Holy earth shit. is. I'm going to show proof that the earth actually curves. All right, you got, I'll start your 15 minutes right now. All right, ready? First. You want to go? Ready? I mean, if you want to go. go first, you could go first. No, you go first. You want me to go first. Okay. So I'm going to turn my screen to some video presentations that I made today. All of them were made today, except for one of them. Okay? Alright. An equatorial okay. mount is a mount for telescopes Second. and cameras that compensate the sky. It works by having one on October 4th. You ready? An equatorial mount is, is a it? mount for telescopes Where? and cameras that compensate for the first rotation. Wait, so one second. Okay, so I did want to just start this off was what I was going to start this off by saying. I want to start this debate off by saying I don't trust NASA. I don't believe in the Big Bang Theory or evolution. And none of those points or subjects should be talked about tonight. I'm here to provide evidence that we all live on a spherical Earth and that we can prove this with our own experimentation and observation. Okay, and now I will show you about 10 to 15 minutes of actual evidence. Are you, are you just going to show me a video or are you going to give me evidence? This, these are, like I just said, these are videos that I put together today. I'm narrating them. And this shows you visual verification that we live on a sphere. And this, every video I show right now, is proof that we live on a sphere. Like the atmosphere that you were just talking about, not the atmosphere flat. The atmosphere that you believe in, you believe in a sphere. You just said, you trapped yourself, buddy. You're dealing with somebody who understands language. Just know that. And everybody out there, you should know I'm a language guy. All right. Okay. So let's uh, oh start God, this going. Dude. You want to start to 15 minutes? Let's go, baby. Yeah, you're two minutes in. Go. No, no, I'm not two minutes in. I said, pause it. That was my introduction. You had 10 minutes of questioning. I just wanted one or two minutes to start my debate. Start it now. Go. Ability to allow the instruments to pass through the Earth. Now, an, an equatorial mount is a mount for telescopes and cameras that compensates for the Earth's rotation relative to the sky. Could you it turn the chat off? One rotational axis parallel to the Earth's axis. The advantage of an equatorial mount lies in its ability to allow the instrument attached to it to stay fixed on any celestial object while driving only one axis at a constant speed. When trying to model an equatorial mount, working as it does in reality, it must be placed on the surface of a sphere. The reason why an equatorial mount proves a globe is because we can track objects celestially by using one axis. A objects, because on a flat Earth, the stars move left to right and up and down. Because just the Earth it, is right? curved and you're going along with the Earth's pause rotation, this? you don't need to worry about the up and down axes. You only have to worry about the left and right axis. An equatorial mount completely debunks flat Earth. Okay. That's one. So I got a phone call. 2017. You ready? Yeah, I got a phone call in, in, while I was in the middle of that. And the point of that is an equatorial mount needs to have two axes moving around. Whereas... Uh, for a flat Earth, an equatorial amount needs an equatorial amount needs two axes to be moving around because the stars and the sun moves up and down and left to right on a flat Earth model, whereas our Earth, the one that we live on, only needs one axis because it only moves left to right when you're looking at celestial objects. But I had a phone call, so it interrupted this where it said that two axis point. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, next point. 17. YouTubers I hope you understand all the stuff that you're talking about, man. <laughs> uninterrupted, remember, this is uninterrupted. On October 1st, 2017, 
YouTuber Sly Sparkane posted a video where a bunch of volunteers from all over the planet measured the altitude angle of the sun during the equinox. Their goal, again, was to find out if the round Earth model would agree with the data gathered from their observation. So participants in nine different countries conducted this simple observation, which is very similar to Eratosthenes' observation done over 2,000 years ago. Using the latitude of each participant, the sun's elevation angle was measured during solar noon for each location. These angles were then placed on a sphere to see if angles correspond accordingly. Spoiler alert, when the lines of altitude were plotted, the only model that resulted in zero contradictions was the globe model. Being that there's only one sun giving off this light, every point should have lined up with the same one sun. Unfortunately for flat earthers, you would need multiple suns in multiple different locations seen by multiple different observers for their flat earth model to make any sense. Yet another example of how with our own experiments, we can reenact what was done thousands of years ago to figure out that we do not live on a flat earth and indeed do live on a sphere. This observation even verified accepted size of the globe. Because the stick lines, which are the lines that were perpendicular to the Earth's surface during observation, all converged to a point in the center of a sphere. And those measurements were used to calculate the size of our globe. However, this observation also hinted that the sun was extremely far away. So if that could be verified, then Sly's observation is rooted in reality to an even greater extent. An equatorial mount is a mount for telescopes and cameras that compensates for the Earth's rotation relative to the sky. Okay, part three. 200 proofs Earth is not a spinning ball by Eric Dubay. Two, the horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer as altitude is gained, so you never have to look down to see it. So this is Red's rhetoric of YouTube who debunks flat Earth, and he flew his drone up 1,600 feet into the air and showed that horizon clearly drops with altitude, and this is proof of curvature and proof that the Earth is round. The Earth is a sphere. Remember, Eric Duvet's second point out of 200 that the Earth isn't a spinning ball is that the horizon will rise with altitude to the viewer's level. You are seeing right in front of you the opposite happen. So this right here is proof of curvature. Look at how that marked horizon has dropped. The Earth is not flat. Eric Duvet is wrong. Deal with it. The sun has a curvature size of around 0.53 degrees, as seen from Earth. If you were to look at the sun through a solar filter and track it all day long, as YouTuber Red's Rhetoric has done in this video, you would see that the sun would remain the same size in the frame. This makes sense because if the sun is the size asserted and at the distance asserted, we would not expect to see any shift in angular size as predicted by the law of perspective. The law of perspective being alpha equals two times the arc in of g over two arc. So observations done in reality confirm what we would expect to see from a distant sun. And that distant sun comports with the observations done by Sly and his volunteers showing the size and shape of our Earth. Flat Earthers believe that the sun is circling the Earth, but the sun doesn't change its angular shape and size. While the flat Earth sun should get smaller as it moves away and bigger as it gets closer. This is a law of angles called perspective, and the flat Earthers cannot get away from this fact. The YouTuber Sean Huffer did some observations with his drone. What he did was very simple. He had his drone at a set altitude and waited till the sun was visible during the sunrise. As soon as the sun was just visible, he dropped altitude and the sun disappeared again. The geometry of a spherical Earth predicts that this would be the case, and when it was tested, it turned out to actually be the case. Alright guys, so now you see how we see the sun again? And Yo, we can't see your video, man. Oh, why is that happening when we lower altitude? It's because the curvature is blocking it. Bro, we can't see your video. And now we see again the sun rising. I see the, the sun. Scene. I see the sun there, right? You guys all see the sun. Everybody sees the sun right there. I, you got the no, it, and this is like... Okay. Yeah, you see the Yo, sun there, right? No, I don't. Your, your screen is loading. 
I see the uh, the equatorial mount. Really? Yeah, I haven't seen anything move for like five minutes. Oh, what the <laughs> fuck? Are you serious? Yep. For five minutes, you haven't seen anything? No, you just keep playing stuff. What do you mean keep playing stuff? I told you I'm going to play like seven different videos. You didn't just see the last video about the sun, uh, the photos of the sun during the day? Nope. I see it on my screen. Yeah, you're you're loading right now. You've been loading for like five minutes. Uh, you could have told me f uh, four minutes ago. Uh, yeah, I was just listening. I wasn't really paying attention. So. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. So do you see me now? No. Wow. Okay. So I'll I'll come. I'll. Uh, I wish I know. I knew when is this happened. Here, wait. Let me turn on the chat and see if anybody else is uh, seeing you. Yo, do you guys see him right now? Do you guys see the presentation, or is the screen loading still? So they can't see. I wonder what the last video they saw was because I didn't. I mean, if you told me four minutes ago, five minutes ago, I would have left the chat and came back in. You know? it, it's the angle of uh, whatever you're talking about, Red's rhetoric's uh, pseudoscience. Oh, my God. So it was the phone call. So for the past, I got a phone call and the video paused. And I think ever since then, you didn't see me. Correct. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, if you should have said something because I, nothing changed, you should have known something happened, bro. That's okay. I was just listening, dude. Okay. So they don't see me yet right now. You still don't see me, right? Correct. Okay, I'm going to come back in, all right? All right. Dude, he's spouting off, like, shit that he's parroting. He doesn't even understand the equations that he's spouting off. This is fucking stupid. I feel like he's an agent, dude. Do you guys get that vibe? <laughs> Hold on. No, because I'm turning it. All right. Well, like I said, I got a phone call, and I didn't even know that it was you saw it was loading bro i played like four or five minutes of video so that's a shame but we'll start it over right now i mean the truth is more important than five minutes in time right right well no you got three minutes you got three minutes no that's fucking crazy bro without telling me that's that's insane what do you want to do that's crazy i'm just going to continue playing these videos you want to stop i can't stop at three minutes it's, just, it's not so now you're going to cut into my time no it's i i'm giving you yeah, an hour if you want to go a little bit over an hour, I'm cool with that. Whatever you, you want can, to do. You can, dude. We have to start it over every hour. Like I told you, part of my time, my main time, are these are these proofs. So we'll stick with the hour. My main time are these proofs that I'm showing everybody that they can observe for themselves. Okay? So we're going to You start. don't understand half the shit you're talking about, dude. We're going to start. You, you didn't even hear it or see it. So I don't know what. What's I heard point? everything, but you're spouting off stuff that you're parroting online. I thought you were going to talk today. I this thought you were going to tell me what you knew. Talking with observational videos that we can all do ourselves, experiments we could all do ourselves. That's Have you done point. any of these experiments? Yeah. I use your own guy, Eric Dubay, that you tell everybody to go read about. I used his second proof about Flat Earth, and I showed with observational you, experimentation that he's wrong. Have you done any experiments yourself? Are you trusting Red's rhetoric? I'm, I'm going to, as everybody sees these experiments, we're all going to be able to do them and verify it. So that's what this is about, so that we can actually have so build, spouting, build science. You're spouting a dogmatic religious belief. I'd like to continue uh, this process. And, you know, if you want to control how many minutes I get, I got cut off there. And you didn't even tell me I got cut off. It would have helped, by the way. But let's let's keep going here. Um. An equatorial mount is a mount for telescopes and cameras that compensates for the Earth's rotation relative to the sky. It works by having one rotational axis parallel to the Earth's axis. The advantage of an equatorial you can turn mount the is its ability to allow the instrument attached to it to be fixed on any celestial object 
while driving only one axis at a constant speed. When trying to model an equatorial mount, working as it does in reality, it must be placed on the surface of a sphere. The reason why an equatorial mount proves a globe is because we can track objects celestially by using one axis. A flat Earth would require the rotation of two axes to track celestial objects, because on a flat Earth, the stars move left to right and up and down. Because the Earth is curved, and you're going along that curve during the Earth's rotation, you don't need to worry about the up and down axes. You only have to worry about the left and right axis. An equatorial mount completely debunks flat Earth. On October 1st, 2017, YouTuber Sly Kane posted a video where a bunch of volunteers from all over the planet measured the altitude angle of the sun during the equinox. Their goal, again, was to find out if the round Earth model would agree with the data from their observation. So participants in nine different countries conducted this simple observation, which is very similar to the Eratosha <clears throat> observation done over 2,000 years ago. Using the latitude of each participant, the sun's elevation was measured during solar noon for each location. These angles Yo. were placed on a sphere to see if angles correspond accordingly. Spoiler alert, when the lines of altitude were plotted, the only model that resulted in zero contradiction. All right, I'm going to start my proofs because we, we're getting into my time right now. And it's not my fault that he had a fucking phone call or anything like that, so... He can come back in. I'm going to start the chat back up. And I'm going to start uh, on my proofs right now. I can go on the internet and parrot whatever I read, but he's not offering any words of his own or any thoughts of his own. He's getting info from some, somewhere else. He's not looking into anything himself. And he had a script that he's fucking parroting. So I could do that. Anybody could do that. I'm trying to debate him. I'm not trying to debate to debate anybody else. So he'll probably come back in. Here we go. And I'll start right now. All right. So, bro, I'm sharing evidence and they could hear my voice and I'm going through the evidence and I'm showing it. Don't worry about it. You don't want to hear the proofs during that time. It's your time now. When I get time again, I'm showing my proofs because this is the main proof that the earth is a sphere. And you're going to have to listen to it. And you should let all your followers listen to it because it debunks everything you're saying. Go ahead with your time, please. All right. Your piece of work, man. <laughs> all right. Now, if gravity exists, which is necessary for the globe model to even hold any weight, then bodies of water should be pulled towards the center of the earth at a rate of 7.98 inches per mile squared. That's on a ball, 24,901 miles in circumference. Now here lies the problem. Um, we can simply see too far over bodies of water. Now what I mean by that, this is a famous uh, Chicago skyline photo. This is a blurry picture, but if you Google Joshua Nowicki, you can bring this up. And many other people have gone to uh, Chicago Skyline and filmed this with uh, a P900 or a P1000. So basically, okay, so the photo was taken. I'm just going to hold this up. The photo was taken from Grand Mirror Park, which is 23 feet above Lake Michigan. Assuming Joshua was at the highest point in Grand Mirror Park and adding six feet of height for that of the camera, at most, the photo was taken 29 feet above the level of water on Lake Michigan. Due to the observer height, you have to subtract seven miles to account for the 29 feet of elevation. 29 foot drop to the horizon equals 6.6 .6 miles. We'll round that up to seven miles, making the total distance 50 miles. Now, given the curvature of the earth for 50 miles, we can calculate that the street level of Chicago is 1,663 feet below the horizon. The tallest building on the horizon is the Sears Tower, which stands at only 1,450 feet tall above street level. The top of the Sears Tower, which is 1,450 feet tall, should be hidden by more than 200 feet. So this is just one of many proofs. Another proof is a Statue of Liberty, which stands at 326 feet tall. And you live in Manhattan. You can go out and get a P900. These are only 500 bucks now, dude. 500 bucks to prove the globe. Okay, you can go. Oops, sorry. You can go out 
see the Statue of Liberty on a, on a clear day from 60 miles out, that should be hidden by more than 2,000 feet of curvature. Okay? And this is over bodies of water, which are not curving. And if bodies of water don't curve and the Earth is covered in 71% water, what shape do you think the Earth is? The next one. U.S. Navy railgun. Locks on the targets 100 nautical miles out using a line of sight laser, okay? That means the laser goes out to the ship, bounces off the ship, comes back to the, the weapon, and it, calcul it calculates the trajectory of the projectile using that laser. Now, the weapon itself shoots a, a, a non-guided projectile, but that's besides the point. The point is that this laser can bounce off of a ship 100 miles out, which should be hidden by more than 6,000 feet of curvature on a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, okay? So either lasers are magically bending over bendy bodies of water or the earth is flat. The weapon can only work on a flat earth. The proof lies within water, water brother. It's very simple. Um, let's see. Oh, before I go any further, I want to mention uh, how the entire heliocentric model got started. Now, the globe was mentioned before uh, Copernicus in 1543. It was only mentioned by Aristotle and um, uh, Pythagoras. So that was between 600 and 500 BC. But it never caught on until 2,000 years later, uh, which is a very, so it's a very recent model. It's only 500 years old in the grand scheme of things, okay? So basically Copernicus was forced to publish his book on the spheres of, or I'm sorry, the revolutions of heavenly spheres by the Vatican, none other than the Vatican, the day he died, hours before he died in 1543. Now, why did they push him to publish this? Copernicus didn't want to put his name on a theory that he couldn't prove. Okay, so this is a quote from Copernicus himself. And I quote, It is not necessary that hypotheses should be true or even probable. It is sufficient that they lead to results of calculation which agree with calculations. The hypothesis of the terrestrial motion of, was nothing more than a, a hypothesis. Valuable only so far as it explained phenomena and not considered with reference to absolute truth or falsehood. So he admitted his theory was not even provable, nor should it be taken as truth. Okay, that's the that's the founder of your beloved spinning ball earth admitting there is no proof for it. Now, the reason the Vatican pushed him to publish this cosmological model is because it basically went against Christianity and the Bible, and that's what the Vatican was up against at the time. Now, the Jesuits were formed in 1540, three years prior to Copernicus publishing his book. The Vatican used Jesuit astronomers to mathematically reverse engineer the original model, replacing the flat and stationary geocentric model with a big spinning ball Earth hurtling around their, their sun, their sun worshippers, okay? Um... So, you know, the Big Bang was created by another Jesuit, George Lemaitre. So it's a big club of Masons, Jesuits, and the Vatican. Who's been in control and power in the whole world for the, for the last 500 years? Masons, Jesuits, the Vatican. People, are you guys, like, beginning to piece together the puzzle right here? Okay. Um, okay, probably the best proof of the ball being a bunch of shit right here. Gas pressure cannot exist next to, I'm sorry, gas, gas pressure next to a vacuum in space cannot exist, okay? So vacuums require a barrier or a container to remain pressurized. So this magical atmosphere that surrounds the globe is supposedly being pushed down due to gravity, okay? So gravity is pushing a gas down and maintaining it in an open system. Now, I'll tell you why that doesn't make any fucking sense, because it directly goes against the second law of thermodynamics, okay? You cannot have a low-pressure system next to a high-pressure system, i.e. the atmosphere next to the vacuum of space without a container or a wall or a barrier in which we do not have, according to the heliocentric doctrine. So, um, 
Yeah, the globe suggests that the magical atmosphere is stuck to the spinning ball next to the, next to the vacuum of space due to gravity, except gravity has never been proven to exist. So how are we not being flung from a spinning, wobbling ball? That's my question. <clears throat> uh, let me get through this. Okay. Another good one. Geodesic experiments with buildings. Now, geodesic basically means the shortest line between two, two points on a sphere, okay? So measurements were done at the bases and tops of two buildings in Brazil, one in Torres and another in Natal, 1,895 miles apart. According to the GLOBE model, the distance from the bases of the building should be shorter than that of the tops, even over a few miles. However, the measurements between the bases and the tops were identical. This experiment can be seen in the convex earth documentary. So surveyors never take into account curvature for bridges, canals, anything. Railroads, nothing. That's because they can't. They have to make it accurate. They have to find level. Um, let me see. Yeah, like five minutes left. Um, um, bear with me here. Trying to find my little slide. Okay. So gravity has no weight whatsoever. It cannot be proven. And I'll tell you why. The only experiment ever set out to prove gravity that has even come close is something known as the Cavendish experiment. All right. Now, the Cavendish experiment is not an experiment at all because it lacks an independent variable. Dependent variables rely on independent variables to form hypotheses in scientific experiments. Without both independent variable and a dependent variable, you do not have a hypothesis, okay? You're loading right now. Anyways, so in the Cavendish experiment, the independent variable which is missing is gravity. The dependent variable is mass. So the experiment suffers from a logical fallacy known as affirming the consequence by assuming gravity already exists and forming the hypothesis with that in mind, that gravity must exist. So the logical fallacy is basically, if P, then Q. Q, therefore P. So it's like saying, if I eat 10 pizzas, I am full. I am full, therefore I must have eaten 10 pizzas. It's a logical fallacy, and they already assume that gravity was existing in the first place. Now, the hypothesis for the experiment is fucking ridiculous. It's literally saying, if mass, then mass attracts mass. Cavendish experiment is not a fucking experiment. It doesn't prove gravity. If, the only thing it proves is that pseudoscience can be masqueraded as science. And so that is the only experiment that you can fucking use to prove gravity. And if gravity doesn't exist, then bodies of water are not curving towards the center of the earth. And if bodies of water do not curve and the earth is covered in 71% water, then what shape is the earth? It's not this. <laughs> it's not a fucking globe. So he's look. yo, can you guys see him? He's loading now. Yeah. So is, is your time up now? I'm still here, but I heard you said I'm loading. I'll come back in when it's my time. Yeah, I got three minutes. Okay. Um, okay, so I know everybody's wondering, okay, if gravity exists, then why does this pen fall? If gravity exists, then why does this balloon float? Are balloons anti-gravity devices, or could it just be a matter of relative density and buoyancy of an object related to the medium it's in? And that's exactly what it is. An object's relative density <laughs> and buoyancy depicts whether or not it floats or falls. So raindrops fall through the air because water is more denser, I'm sorry, is more dense than oxygen. Air bubbles float to the surface in water because air is less dense than water. 
balloons float in the air because helium is less dense than oxygen. It's not that gravity has an affinity for water and something highly personal against party decorations. It's simply a matter of relative density and buoyancy related to the medium an object is confined in. Dense molecules will always fall through mediums consisting of lesser dense molecules. That's what a lot of people cannot get. It is very simple. It is the natural law of the universe and gravity has no business in this. Gravity is not needed for a flat earth. Gravity is definitely needed for a spinning ball earth. So when you talk about gravity not being necessary for this to be possible, you have a huge misunderstanding of the model itself, not only the atmosphere, but water curving and convexing. So that's my proof. My proof is water does not curve. The majority of the earth is covered in it and gravity has never been proven. And I got a minute and a half left, but I'll let you go. That's all I need. Okay, so I'm going to come back in because apparently you said it, it was loading, which I appreciate you told me this time. You didn't tell me last time, which wasted a lot of my time. So I'm going to come right back. Yeah, yeah. Yep, go. I can't believe you said you, you don't need gravity for the globe. Right off the bat, I was like, all right, it's in the bag. <laughs> I can't believe this guy, dude. I wonder how much time we got. What I, what I said was the shape of the earth has nothing. We're talking geometry, not physics. That's what I said. So anyway, so how much time do I get right now? Because I got cut short there and I want to. My rebuttal to you is showing proof that you just said we have no proof of curvature. Water doesn't curve. I will show evidence of all of this. All right. We'll, we'll both go for seven minutes. I think we got 20 minutes left, but we'll go for like 15 and just to be safe. So go for seven. And then, so this is your rebuttal right now. And are you can do uninterrupted. Please take the chat off on the bottom. Seven minutes uninterrupted. I would like 10 minutes, really. I didn't get. You really screwed me by not telling me it was loading. That's an unfair thing that I wouldn't have done. That's dishonest. But starting right now, it. seven minutes. All right, go. Okay, let's go. Yo, volume. Two for volume. We start. One second. I'm having a volume thing here. Hold on. 17. YouTuber Sly Sparkane posted a video where a bunch of volunteers from all over the planet measured the altitude angle of the sun during the equinox. Their goal, again, was to find out if the round earth model would agree with the data gathered from their observation. So participants in nine different countries conducted a simple observation which is very similar to Eratosthenes' observation done over 2,000 years ago. Using the latitude of each participant, the sun's elevation angle was measured during solar noon for each location. These angles were then placed on a sphere to see if angles correspond accordingly. Spoiler alert, when the lines of altitude were plotted, the only model that resulted in zero contradictions was the globe model. Being that there's only one sun giving off this light, every point should have lined up with the same one sun. Unfortunately for flat earthers, you would need multiple suns in multiple different locations seen by multiple different observers for their flat earth model to make any sense. Yet another example of how with our own experiments, we can reenact what was done thousands of years ago to figure out that we do not live on a flat earth and indeed do live on a sphere. This observation even verified accepted size of the globe. Because the stick lines, which are the lines that were perpendicular to the Earth's surface during observation, all converged to a point in the center of a sphere. And those measurements were used to calculate the size of our globe. However, this observation also hinted that the sun was extremely far away. So if that could be verified, then Sly's observation is rooted in reality to an even greater extent. 200 proofs Earth is not a spinning ball by Eric Dubay. Two, the horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer as altitude is gained, so you never have to look down to see it. So this is Red's rhetoric of YouTube, who debunks Flat Earth, and he flew his drone up 1,600 feet into the air and showed that horizon clearly drops with altitude 
And this is proof of curvature and proof that the Earth is round. The Earth is a sphere. Remember, Eric Duvet's second point out of 200 that the Earth isn't a spinning ball is that the horizon will rise with altitude to the viewer's level. You are seeing right in front of you the opposite happen. So this right here is proof of curvature. Look at how that marked horizon has dropped. The Earth is not flat. Eric Dubé is wrong. Deal with it. This probably has a known angular size of around 0 0.53 degrees, as seen from Earth. If you were to look at the sun through a solar filter and track it all day long, as YouTuber Red's Rhetoric has done in this video, you would see that the sun would remain the same size in the frame. This makes sense because if the sun is the size asserted and at the distance asserted, we would not expect to see any shift in angular size as predicted by the law of perspective. The law of perspective being alpha equals two times the arc in of g over 2r. So observations done in reality confirm what we would expect to see from a distant sun. And that distant sun comports with the observations done by Sly and his volunteers showing the size and shape of our Earth. Flat Earthers believe that the sun is circling the Earth, but the sun doesn't change its angular shape and size. While the flat Earth sun should get smaller as it moves away, and bigger as it gets closer. This is a law of angles called perspective, and the flat earthers cannot get away from this fact. The YouTuber Shocker did some observations with his drone. What he did was very simple. He had his drone at a set altitude and waited till the sun was visible during the sunrise. As soon as the sun was just visible, he dropped altitude and the sun disappeared again. The geometry of a spherical Earth predicts that this would be the case, and when it was tested, it turned out to actually be the case. All right, guys, so now you see how we see the sun again? And now it's getting blocked out. Why is that happening when we lower altitude? It's because the curvature is blocking it. Nope. And now we see again the sun rising. In the same day, we see the sun rising again. This would never happen on a flat Earth. Because parallel lines do not intersect. One line being your sight of view, the other line being the ground. And to pretend like the ground is going to block your view, is nothing short of delusion. This same observation was seen by Red's rhetoric using his DJI Mavic Pro, but with a sunset, not a sunrise. When his Mavic Pro gained altitude, the sun that had already set came back into frame and you could watch it set again. You know, as predicted by the round earth model, this observation was done between five and four hundred yeah. feet. <laughs> the point of these videos are to show it's not the distance to the sun that dictates whether or not you can see it. It's the altitude in which you see it when it's about to crest the horizon. It shows that the horizon actually does rise relative to the sun and a rising horizon relative to the sun is exactly what we would expect to see on a round Earth. Because as you lose altitude, part of the curve is going to obstruct your view from the sun. Now let's jump to what is some of the best evidence for the curvature of the Earth. And that is YouTuber Soundly's Lake Pontchartrain Causeway observation. The length of the causeway makes it possible to see the curvature of the Earth directly given a clear enough day. When the atmospheric clarity allows for it, you will be able to see the causeway literally curving with the Earth. These observations were also filmed with the flat earther camera of choice, the Nikon P900. What is amazing here is that this observation was virtually modeled with the assumed size and shape of the goal. And when you compare the computer renderings to what was actually observed, okay. they match Positive. as expected. This shows that the round earth model made a prediction all right. Um, I'm just gonna rebuttal all those that all those and stuff. Are you ready? 
Now, the sunset in perspective, the reason that you see further when you're higher up or when you zoom in with a camera is due to perspective. The viewer at sea level can see for 3.1 miles with the naked eye until all lines converge into a central focal point. That's the vanishing point. That's exactly why ships appear to disappear, you know, when they're going out to the horizon, okay? Now, they do this from the bottom up because your angle of view is smallest from the hull compared to the masthead. So think of it as like, think of it as like a ruler. You have a ruler, right, based up like this, and you push it out on the horizon. It gets big. And then the angle decreases as it goes further away, right? So what happens to objects when they go further away? Can you tell me? They get smaller and then disappear. Very good. Okay. The mathematical formula to that. Do you know that? What's up? You know that perspective. What is perspective? Because flat earthers just like to say perspective as if it means perception. What is perspective? Perspective is lines converging into a center focal point. Is perspective a formula, a mathematical formula? No, it's a natural phenomenon. It is. Perception, perspective is a mathematical formula that you can literally define the things you're talking about with. You're just coming out, you're just following YouTubers who say perspective to everything when it's actually mm -hmm. a scientific formula to figure things out. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at my eyes and experience. So are you saying that street lamps that appear to descend in height are all different heights as they go down the street? Or are they all the same height and they converge into a center focal point due to your field of view and your vision? Are they all the no. same height? No, if the earth was flat, you wouldn't see that happening because parallel lines do not intersect. It's getting okay. smaller because the law of perspective the same way that all the things you're looking at when you show those photos, it's all perspective that you're not understanding. You're skewing the definition. So it's due to curvature. When you're dealing with water and horizons, like I just showed you a lake that you could literally see the curvature on the lake. Yeah. Yeah, but is that bridge straight or is it curved? It's curving over the it's it's curving over the horizon. I'm talking at if you're looking at it from above, is the bridge straight or is it curved? Is the bridge straight or is it curved? Um, it's curved. Okay. I'll save you time. It's curved. You can go to Google Earth and look at Lake Pontotron or whatever the fuck it's called. Right, but what is it curving over? A flat a flat I'm not talking I'm not talking about curving over water. I'm talking like if you're looking at it from above, straight down from a helicopter, it's not straight. It has a bow to it. And that's why it appears to curve when you're looking at it from the left side. When you look at it from the right side with a P900, it looks straight, it looks flat. The curvature is because the bridge is not completely straight. So that's debunked right off the bat. High altitude balloon footage, you can see any uh, high altitude balloon footage going to 121,000 feet and the horizon rises to the eye of the observer. Not only that, but NASA's record uh, hypersonic flight, the X-15, I believe it's called, they took a photo at 317,000 feet high. Guess what the horizon did? Can you guess? You, you tell me, buddy, because you, you rose, claim to have an app, you rose have to the money. eye of the observer. It rose straight up to the eye of the observer, and it was completely flat. Now, I'm not going to use that as proof because I don't fucking trust NASA. But I'm just saying they forgot to put a fish eye on and the horizon rose to the eye of the observer. OK. Now, sunset and perspective. The reason that the sun appears to come back into view when you zoom in is because you're pushing that vanishing point further away from the observer. Now, all high powered optical instruments. Listen, all high powered optical instruments have a limit. This only has 83 optical zoom. OK, so you have a limit in which you can zoom in and then objects are definitely going to appear to disappear over the horizon. They're simply leaving your vanishing point. And the reason that you can see higher and bring a sunset back into view and have it set twice due to the altitude is because you're rising up and you're increasing your field of view. Okay. So like I said, it's like if you put a ruler on the horizon 
and you stand it up straight, what happens to the ruler when it goes further away? Your angle of view decreases, therefore the size of the object decreases, therefore the sun decreases in size and appears to disappear. You're, you're not understanding the law of perspective. It size. It doesn't decrease in angular size, ever. Yes, it does. It no, it doesn't. Yes, it it does. has to on a flat earth, but it doesn't do that. It, it's dependent on the atmosphere and the density of the atmosphere. People don't understand that it's a mathematical formula to figure out when you're on a highway and there's two cars and one car goes all the way in front of you and it disappears. It's a scientific mathematical formula that you still haven't understood yet. So you're just using perspective as like a, a line to just throw out to debunk everything and it just doesn't work that way. No, it does. And you can observe no, it. Perspective it is it. alpha equals two times the arctan of G over two R. That is actually math. And you okay, still do you understand haven't it? figured out that that's the math. And I'm not saying I'm an expert it? in all this math. I'm not exactly. an expert in all this math. Dude, but all of your videos, excuse me, all of your videos were parroting. It was very obvious that those were not your words. You're parroting a script that was either sent to you or you looked up. You don't, you don't know if that was true that you were talking about, dude. You're just parroting I'm shit, so and that's why you recorded it, because you can't talk like man to man. You can't talk and think with your own mind. You have to parrot people. That's why you haven't come up with one single proof on your own, other than Aristotle's and all I'm showing shit. everybody experiments that they could do themselves and view for themselves. You're not doing that. You're talking about done yourself. I've done experiments over bodies of water with my own camera. I can tell you from personal experience that bodies of water do not curve. And if bodies of water do not curve and the earth is covered in 71% of water, what the what shape do you think the earth is, bro? Seriously, this isn't rocket science. This is the most easily provable conspiracy. The hard part is getting past your conditioning. And I've been there. Everybody's been there, dude. No. Been Philosopher, the thousands of philosophers have observed the curvature with ships and i'm going to continue with my last two uh proofs of the curvature over here ships don't prove curvature yeah they do <laughs> okay you're nice. dude. notice how those huts on the left side of the bridge all the way towards the end of the bridge look so much closer together than the ones in the beginning this is due to the law of perspective Many flat earthers like to make the claim that we never see any proof of curvature, especially with large bodies of water. Well, you should head over to Louisiana and check out Lake Pontchartrain and see it for yourself. This is a lake and not an ocean to add to the assault. Once again, we have more proof of curvature and visual proof that a flat earth does not exist. Now, one visual experiment we've seen for thousands of years is the one of a ship sailing below the horizon. I just Thank talked you. about this, bro. I just told you why they would disappear first. MC, the MC. I'm showing you proof right here. This video shows a tanker <laughs> ship being partially obscured by the horizon, yet with absolutely no visual limitations via the atmosphere. It's also worth pointing out that we have enough angular size to work with when it comes to the ship in question, Therefore, the only reason why the ship would be partially not visible is if something was in the way. And the video clearly shows that it's the water, the very same water that finds its own level. This isn't anything new. This observation has been done for centuries. And when you look at all the evidence presented, you find one thing in common. They all converge on the same answer for not only the shape of the Earth, but the size of the Earth as well. So observations done in reality confirm the size and shape of our Earth. These observations can be repeated. Anybody can verify it for themselves. The strength of our case lies not in the fact that we have millions of dollars to spend. The strength of our case lies in the fact we're gathered by normal, everyday people. And once again, we see proof of the curvature. The Earth is not flat, and we live a sphere. All right, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. We're, we got like 20 seconds left. So, um... We're going to do a, a part two of the debate, and we're going to actually do a part three after that where Freedom Faction is going to post. So look for another part two in about two weeks. But um, until next time, thanks for coming on, man. I wish you had a stronger argument, but until I next time.